Yancey Strickler, this could be our future, a manifesto for a more generous world. In the book, This Could Be Our Future, A Manifesto for a More Generous World, Yancey Strickler explores the invisible ideas and concepts that govern our lives, with a focus on financial maximization. Strickler analyzes the history and consequences of this idea and its effects on our society and values. Venture into a world where money is the driving force behind nearly every decision, from businesses to entertainment, leading to consequences for innovation, creativity, and equality. Discover how financial maximization has ingrained itself into our culture, stifling progress, and consider alternative perspectives to break free from these invisible chains. Challenging Financial Maximization Kickstarter's success disproves the idea that financial maximization should govern human actions. In his book, Author Yancey Strickler discusses how this notion has become embedded in our daily lives and how it has led to the prioritization of profits over societal responsibility. The book calls to question the effectiveness of this ideology and the impact it has on various aspects of human activity. The Perils of Maximizing Profit Economist Adam Smith's belief in self-interest is often misinterpreted by corporations to justify maximizing profit, resulting in a culture of greed and distrust. The Rand Corporation's game theory approach prioritizes rationality over values like loyalty and honor, leading to a justification for immediate gains at any cost. This framework has become the dominant decision-making tool in business, government and society, perpetuating this culture. Maximizing Finance, Minimizing Creativity Financial maximization has led to a decline in creativity and diversity in entertainment, radio, and real estate. The article explains how the same logic makes all content the same, tunes down diversity, and has stifled innovation. The book's summary is about the concept of financial maximization and its impact on creativity and diversity across different industries. The author sheds light on how finance and profitability have taken precedence over diversity and innovation, leading to the erosion of creativity in entertainment, radio, and real estate industries. Radio stations are now dominated by large corporations that broadcast similar playlists throughout the United States. This has led to a decline in the diversity of songs played on various radio stations. The author argues that financial maximization has resulted in a homogenization of content. The same goes for the entertainment industry, which is composed of countless sequels, prequels, and adaptations rather than original content. In New York City, the real estate business has been taken over by big corporations that have priced out small businesses and iconic venues. This has led to a decline in the diversity of the city's neighborhoods. The author suggests that the same financial maximization has stifled creativity, innovation, and diversity in all aspects of our lives. In conclusion, this book's summary highlights the ways in which financial maximization has led to the decline of creativity and diversity across multiple sectors. It argues that financial profitability has taken precedence over the creation of innovative, diverse content that resonates with audiences. The author provides a thought-provoking analysis of how financial incentives have shaped the way we experience entertainment and culture. The maximizing class, growing richer at the expense of everyone else. In the late 1970s, the maximizing class emerged as experts in financial maximization, an art of extracting wealth and minimizing costs. By cutting wages, avoiding taxes, and slashing budgets, they help big businesses grow their profits while neglecting workers' welfare. Their strategy involves merging with bigger businesses, eliminating redundancies, cutting costs, and affecting consumer services. Their actions have resulted in the stagnation of wages for average American workers, while compensation for executives and managers rose by 1,000% since 1977. Ultimately, their practices lead to the company's bankruptcy, leaving workers and local communities devastated. The maximizing class's greed equates to the deprivation of everyone else. Money, a base for fulfillment. Money is a necessary foundation for human survival and safety. 
However, according to the Pyramid of Human Needs by Abraham Maslow, money doesn't bring happiness and fulfillment. People need financial safety to pursue higher order needs, but when money becomes the sole goal, it prevents us from reaching our potential. The GDP metric, which only measures money, doesn't reflect true well-being and doesn't take other values into account. To increase the nation's well-being, we need to consider other values beyond financial metrics. Bentoism, organizing your life's values. Bentoism is a way of organizing life's values into four compartments, allowing for rational decision-making based on broader self-interests. This concept includes four boxes, now you, future you, now us, and future us. Each box contains the values that guide behaviors and actions. Now you is the self-interest of the present moment, often guided by financial maximization. Future you includes the values of purpose, mastery, and grit. Now us holds all the values connected to people, such as community and fairness. Future us includes the values for the world, such as awareness and sustainability. Bentoism applies to individuals and companies, offering a competitive advantage as seen in Kickstarter's steady growth. Rational decision-making involves weighing all values against each other to make informed choices. The Bigger Picture Ticket scalping is a common problem faced by fans when their favorite events go on sale. Many unofficial ticketing websites and individuals buy up tickets in bulk, then resell them to fans at much higher prices. However, Adele took a different approach to ticket distribution for her 2015 tour. She teamed up with a startup company, Songkick, to determine her most loyal fans and opened up ticket sales to them first. That way, less than 2% of tickets were resold. By focusing on fairness instead of maximizing profits, Adele proved that there is a bigger picture beyond short-term financial gain. This idea is further exemplified by the NBA's three-point shot, where data analysis revealed that teams that attempted more three-pointers scored more points in the long run, completely transforming the game. By discovering new forms of value, we can change how we approach situations both in sports and in life. From unusual to normal. It takes time to change society's value spectrum and prioritizing financial maximization alone can stifle growth and prosperity. Back in 1960, something as simple as taking an early morning jog was deemed so unusual that people regularly called the police on joggers. It wasn't until the late 1960s when newspapers reported on the trend of jogging, and it wasn't until John F. Kennedy made physical activity a national priority during his presidency that exercise became a normal pastime. This illustrates the key message that it takes time to change our value spectrum, it took about 30 years for society to quit smoking and start exercising in significant numbers. New ideas are often born in a crisis, and even the great British economist John Maynard Keynes recognized that financial maximization couldn't last forever. In its current form, prioritizing financial maximization can stifle growth, entrepreneurship, and creativity, and it only serves the few, not the many. It's time to adopt a new, broader spectrum of values that guide our communities, businesses, and private lives. This might mean giving up quick profits now to reap the rewards later, and prioritizing community over cash. Kickstarter succeeded with its slow and steady growth strategy, while Adele's loyalty-based ticketing scheme put community over cash. When we prioritize more than financial maximization, we enrich our lives in ways that money alone never could. We must adopt a new value spectrum to promote growth and prosperity, even if it means leaving behind the foul emotion of greed that once fueled our economy. The book's key takeaway is the undeniable influence of financial maximization on our lives and the realization that this concept is not an immutable truth, but a human-made idea. Strickler encourages the reader to adopt a broader spectrum of values to challenge this notion and seek more fulfilling and just ways of life. It is time for us to focus on expanding our value system beyond financial goals, to prioritize factors such as creativity, fairness, community, and sustainability. By following the principles of bentoism and challenging the status quo, a more generous world awaits us, promoting the well-being and happiness of everyone involved.